Well, good morning. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. I want to talk to you today a little bit about estates and wills. It seems like uh, there's more and more estate sales coming on the board these days, and it raises some interesting questions. I had a salesperson call me the other day, and he said, uh, I've got a situation where the property is um, uh, ready to be listed, and uh, it, the husband has passed away, and yet if I go on Geo Warehouse, it still shows the husband registered on title. What do I do? What do I names do I put on the listing and who do I get to sign it and so on? Well, generally speaking, when you've got a husband and wife uh, on title on a property, they hold it as joint tenants and not tenants in common. I would say that was more than 99 times out of 100. And of course, joint tenancy has what's called the right of survivorship. What that means is on the death of one spouse, the property automatically reverts to the other spouse. It doesn't go into the estate of the deceased person. So what that means is that in this particular case, the house is automatically in the name of the surviving spouse. And she is free to list it in her name only and sign a document in her name only. You don't need to check the will. You don't need to worry about all the processing of the estate because it was joint tenants. Well, it isn't always that straightforward though. What do you do, for example, if the house was only in the husband's name? Now the principle of uh, uh, survivorship doesn't apply because there's no joint tenancy. The husband dies, the property is in his name, and so the property goes into his estate. Now in most cases, in a situation like that, the husband will name the wife as the beneficiary of his estate, and it's just a case of processing to get the deed transferred over to the wife's name. But it isn't automatic. It has to be done. If the wife decides she wants to sell the property, you as a real estate agent need to check and make sure you've got a death certificate. You need to check the will and find out that it is being transferred to the wife. And then you need to find out uh, who has, uh, who's the executor of the will. And they can either sign the listing or if it's already transferred, the wife can sign the listing. And it goes on like that. But it may be even more complicated than that. Let's suppose you've got uh, uh, a husband and wife, but it's a second marriage. And um, the husband, in his will, didn't leave the house to his wife. He left the house to his daughter. He wanted to make sure that, um, that upon this second marriage, that his uh, assets were being shared with his children. And so he left the house to his daughter. So the daughter calls you up and says, my dad has passed away. He willed the house to me, and I want to put it up for sale. And the daughter provides you with a copy of the death certificate. She gives you a copy of the will, and uh, she, you can fin track her that proves her identification. So can the daughter go ahead and list the property for sale? No. Why not? Well, because it's a matrimonial home. And because it's a matrimonial home, remember the matrimonial home, you cannot encumber or dispose of the home without the other spouse's consent. Now, even though the first spouse has deceased, the surviving spouse has an interest in that home, and so the daughter can't sell it without involving the stepmom. All right, let's make it even more convoluted. Exact same scenario. You've got uh, the, the husband, the male, passes away. Um, the house is strictly in his name. He's willed it to his daughter, but now they're not married. They're living common law. If they're living common law, it's not technically a matrimonial home, what do you do? Well, you help the stepmom find an apartment. Simple as that. But it's not simple. These things are all somewhat convoluted. But let's go back to the, the type of scenario you're most likely to run into. Uh, one spouse has passed away. The home has passed on to another spouse, so it's sole ownership by one person, and now that one person is deceased. What do you do? They, uh, the estate wants to clear up the estate and they want to sell the house. Well, you as a realtor, you need to list it in the estate of John Doe. That's how the listing shows. You need to check the death certificate to find out that it's actually valid. You need to check the will uh, to find out who the executor is, and then you need to identify the executor to make sure that uh, the person that's signing has the authority to sign 
the property, and they would sign under the estate of John Doe, they would sign so-and-so executor or executrix. The other thing you need to concern yourself with is probate. It may or may not be required. It's not always required. If there's bank involved, they will insist on it. What probate does is it gives uh, the government backing that the will is the final will and can be relied upon, and you don't have to worry about somebody coming on after the fact and taking a legal action. It's not called a probate anymore. It's called a certificate of appointment of a state trustee. Same concept. And you need to find out if that's uh, in place, if it's been done, if it's required, and you need to perhaps uh, put on the listing and reference on an agreement of person sale with a condition that that um, certificate of appointment of a state trustee be completed uh, within such and such a time and the provision for an extension of the transaction if necessary. I hope that makes sense. It sounds a little bit convoluted, but it's really important. We're going to run across these things, I think, more and more as the baby boomers get older and older and some of these properties become um, estate sales. And we need to make sure that we have our I's dotted and our T's crossed. Thank you so very much for watching this video. I look forward to talking to you again next week.